Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Judgment Begins in the in the House. Today is um, Friday, April the 11th on the Gregorian calendar. No, nope, April 12th. I had to take a look. <laughs> April 12th, 2024 on the Gregorian calendar. And we are wonderfully in the month of Kaviv, a month full of promises, a month full of the promise of miracles of restoration and redemption um, being brought through by the hand of God, all manner of enslavement and limitation and hindrance. So it's just a ripe month with promise. And I don't know about you, but I am just committed to doing all that the Lord will allow and direct me to help as many of us who listen to this um, this channel as possible and want to truly cross over, to not find ourselves going around the same mountain or even portions of the same mountain, right? Um, but really to step into the new. And so today when I was just sitting with the Lord and considering some things and just really um, considering what's going on around us, but asking the Lord to allow me to see from a heavenly perspective, if you will, not keeping my mind on things below, but really seeing things from a heavenly perspective. He shared with me this word, and it is a great promise to each of us. The Lord says that the reality of his favor will soon be obvious for the world to see. The Lord says to us that he's going to heap favor upon favor upon favor on those who hearken the voice of his call. And then the Lord said, call to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So let me just read it to you the way the Lord gave it to me. The Lord sent me tonight, today, whenever you hear this message, today or in the future, to tell you that the reality of his favor will soon be obvious for the world to see. The Lord said, I am going to heap favor upon favor upon favor upon those who hearken the voice of my call. And then he says, he invites us, he reminds us to call to him. him. He says, call to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Now call to me and I will show you great and mighty things you know not of is Jeremiah 33, three. And today I just wanted to go deeper into that. Not just limit it to um, anything that I'd limited it to before, but I wanted to go deeper. And here's what I want to encourage you with. When Jeremiah receives this word of the Lord, Jeremiah is still being held captive in the king's court. Remember the king, the leaders of Judah and Israel were angry, hated Jeremiah, imprisoned him, did all manner of things because Jeremiah prophesied what the Lord said. And Jeremiah prophesied their captivity because of their sin, because of their rebellion against the Lord. He prophesied who God is, hoping that there would be repentance, there would be a true turning, right? But Jeremiah prophesied what the Lord said, and it wasn't a rah-rah, sis, sis boom ba, <clears throat> super-duper message. It was a message of impending captivity for Judah because of their sinfulness. So the Lord is saying to Jeremiah, while he himself is being held imprisoned in the king's court amongst his own people who hate him for representing the Lord well, he's saying to him, Jeremiah, call to me and I'll show you great and mighty things. He's giving Jeremiah a promise. What is even more exciting about this and Jeremiah's life 
in Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah purchases land on behalf of his cousin while he is in prison, right? His cousin asked him to lend him money to essentially be the usury, if you will, to buy land for the cousin. He doesn't promise Jeremiah a portion. He, you know, doesn't promise to do anything exceptional for Jeremiah. He doesn't seem overly concerned about providing comfort for Jeremiah or even helping Jeremiah with the predicament he's in. Jeremiah's cousin is there, ask Jeremiah to help him buy this land. Jeremiah says yes, and he gives the money to purchase land while he's in prison, while he is prophesying impending captivity. And he's seen what will happen, how few people will be left of Israel and what their desolate condition will be. He's still just one chapter earlier. I don't know how many months or days that would be contextually, but he still trusted in his future, a hope and a future, and for God to have only good plans for him, to do him no harm. Jeremiah 29, 11, he trusted God enough to say, yes, I'll purchase this land. So today, as I was receiving this word, considering the promise that God is saying he's going to soon make it obvious to the world so that all will know that he heaps favor upon favor upon favor for those who heed his voice, heed his call. We can call to him for great and mighty things. I just want to say, let's call to him. If we've been asking God for spiritual understanding beyond where we are today, if we've been asking and believing the Lord for discernment or the gift of the word of knowledge, the ability to hear his voice more clearly, and yes, even for material things, provisional things, so that we can accomplish his plans in the earth, this month, Habib is the month of miracles. It's the month when the Lord provided a way out of captivity for Israel with Egypt's wealth along with them. And in Jeremiah, through Jeremiah's testimony in life, we are reminded that God's plans for us, yes, first for his children Israel, but for all who believe in Yeshua, God's plans for us are for a hope and a future. This month is the month where we can believe, and I will even say decree a thing, even as I am becoming more confident and comfortable with doing so, decreeing what God says to us, and calling out to him to show me great and mighty things that I've not ever known. And the beauty is that just one chapter earlier, Jeremiah exemplifies this faith, having purchased land while he's in prison because he already had the promise from Jeremiah 29, 11 of the Lord to say that his plans and hope for us are for a hope and a future and to do us no harm. We can trust him. So today I just want to say to you all, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed Habib. Thank you, Lord, for being our peace, our Shabbat, our Shalom, our wholeness. We call to you now, believing and decreeing that you will show us great and mighty things that we know not of.
Your word says that you have plans for us, plans for good and to not do us harm. And so we decree, especially now, as your children are seemingly in the natural, surrounded by the enemy, we decree that there are many more with us than there are against us. We decree that you will lift us on our hind heels so that we are not, our feet are not dashed against the stone and so that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we cry to you and decree that you will today show us great and mighty things in the spirit and in truth that we have not ever known. And yes, Lord, we trust you and decree according to your word that you will show favor, heap favor upon favor upon favor toward those who heed your call. So we say yes to your call today. We say yes to your promises in Christ, which are yes and amen. And we decree that you will provide, as you did for Jeremiah, land, relationship, hallelujah, shalom, wholeness in every way, so that your favor will become obvious, obvious for the world to see. We thank you for all of these things, Father, and we lift your name on high. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I pray that everyone listening to this message who has accepted Yeshua as their Savior will come into a fresh, greater understanding and anointing for your promises and what's available to us. And I pray that those who have not yet will begin to see your favor manifest through your children so that you and your favor is obvious to them. And they choose by virtue of our living testimony to cry out, what must I do to be saved? We thank you for all of these things in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. God bless you all. Rest well this Shabbat. Trust God in all things. Remember our authority to decree peace. Be still in Yeshua's name. Talk soon, Lord willing.